Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the witnesses for being here today. Um, a key support mechanism for our military alliances in the Pacific is a robust uh, diplomatic presence. Yet we face the very real prospect of severe cuts to the state and foreign operations budget that funds the State Department, USAID, and other diplomatic programs. How would significant cuts to the international affairs budget complicate efforts to maintain alliances and ensure we are able to present a united front against political aggression by the Chinese government against Taiwan? Congresswoman, thank you for the, for the question. Um, the, uh, we, we have used the diplomatic budget effectively um, throughout, uh, throughout the Indo-Pacific to be able to shore up alliances and partnerships where it comes um, to uh, reimagining our alliances and partnerships with Japan, with Vietnam, with Korea, um, with, with Taiwan, of course, um, with the Philippines. Um, if, the, if there are cuts to the state foreign ops budget, um, and I can speak from, from the, the perspective of the IMED account, our peacekeeping operations account, um, and um, our foreign military financing. Because these budgets are so heavily earmarked, we have very little flexibility. Um, if there were cuts, what we would have to do is look at anything that isn't earmarked and put it on the cutting room floor. Um, and uh, there is no earmark for Taiwan. There are, there are very few earmarks in the Indo-Pacific. Um, and so we would be looking at, um, at, at keeping status quo, which is that 70% of the FMF budget is in the Middle East. Um, we, are, we cannot afford to do that. Thank you. Um, Secretary Ratner or Secretary Resnick, the United States, Japan, and South Korea recently concluded a summit that made progress on a number of fronts to expand trilateral collaboration. Can you elaborate on how we are expanding collaboration with our trilateral allies, particularly the joint military industrial base capacity expansion and specialization, and what areas we are looking to further expand coordination in the future? Sure, I'm happy to uh, start uh, to say that the um, leader level meeting that President Biden hosted at Camp David truly was historic in terms of bringing together uh, two of our closest allies around the world, Japan uh, and South Korea. And I think there's no question that all three of those countries are uh, more secure when we are all working more closely together. Um, during that summit, there were two particular announcements that were made as it relates to military cooperation. One uh, was to advance a program on uh, data sharing for early missile warning data between the three countries, particularly related to the North Korea threat. We're making progress on that and hope to uh, have uh, that in place by the end of this calendar year. Uh, and secondarily, uh, in addition, uh, to be developing a more regularized program of trilateral military exercises and cooperation, that's also uh, under development, and we think this is a really positive uh, trend, and it's one that is not just happening in Northeast Asia. I should say that uh, we are working uh, increasingly in combination with our allies and partners, Japan, Australia, and the United States, also as a trilateral configuration, are engaging in new and uh, unprecedented forms of military cooperation, and we think this is really uh, important for deterrence and for regional security. Thank you. Um, one of the alarming but not unexpected dynamics of Russia's war with Ukraine has been the tendency of African nations to remain uninvolved or continue to engage with Russia despite its gruesome war crimes, uh, which I would characterize as colonial war, a colonial war of aggression. Would we expect a similar dynamic to play out in a Chinese invasion of Taiwan and how are we working to increase engagement with our African partners that would make them less likely to side with China or continue to treat China normally uh, should it move aggressively toward Taiwan? Thanks for that question. Um, and this is something that we, we work on every day um, globally, but including in Africa, um, to make the case for the rules-based international order and how Africa um, especially can benefit from it. Um, we have a lot of work to do here, um, and especially in the context of Wagner operations um, in Africa, uh, we have a lot of work to do in order to remain competitive. That is something that we have started in a number of countries, um, and we're happy to come back and, and brief you in a different 
current environment. Um, we, we understand that there are some lessons learned from, from these kind of conversations that could apply um, in a Taiwan scenario, um, and we'll continue to work those relationships. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you. The chair now recognizes the Congress.